Hi, and welcome back to my blog on all things history. My name is Shannon Bontrager, and today we're going to do a film review of The Photographer of Mount Housen, out on Netflix now. The Photographer of Mount Housen is a Spanish film that's co-produced by Netflix, along with Spanish channel RTVE and Catalan TVC. Is directed by Mar Targarona and it stars Mario Casas as Francisco Bosch and Richard von Ryden as Paul Ricken. The film takes place in the Mount Housen concentration camp complex. The main story focuses around one of these communist Catalan survivors of the Spanish Civil War named Francisco Bosch who ended up surviving his experiences in Mount Housen as well. But Bosch, unlike many others, was able to get a job working in the photography department for the Nazi um, commander, Paul von, Paul Ricken. Uh, here, what Ricken is supposed to do is document all the historical events on the concentration camp. But he does not take photographs as a artist, nor as a documentarian he tends to take photographs for propaganda purposes so that the Nazis can publish these photographs or show them to people and say, look, these people were escaping. We didn't murder them. They were running away. And this was the consequence of that. So here, photography becomes an opportunity for the Nazis to, in essence, cover up some of their crimes which is what makes the photographs very interesting. Because as historians, we are always looking for primary sources, particularly when it comes to the Holocausts. There um, is a need, particularly in the early 21st century, to continue to document that these events happen. Unfortunately, in this world in which documents, primary sources, photographs can so easily be photoshopped or faked, there may be, in essence, a sort of a, a loss of confidence in these primary sources from a documentarian perspective. Particularly when we understand that, in essence, what Ricken is doing here at Mount Housen is, in a way, photoshopping, analog style, uh, the events that are happening in the concentration camp. Now, this film is based on a true story. Paul Ricken existed. Francisco Bosch existed. Ricken becomes worse than some of the other Nazi perpetrators because he uses his camera to be a voyeur, to not only document the events, but also to think perversely about everything that happens in the camp. Francisco Bosch becomes Ricken's assistant and in essence is charged mostly with uh, developing the film in a dark room and uh, making the final productions available and then storing and archiving the, uh, the negatives in file cabinets and in files um, for whatever purposes that the Nazis would use. All of this gives historians another sort of alternative way to think about this film, particularly because historians oftentimes rely on archival collections to write their history. Well, here what the Nazis are creating is an archive of propaganda, of film negatives, that can be researched, can be cataloged, can be described, and can be called upon by any of the Nazi historians or politicians who are trying to show that Mount Hausen is just a prison camp. Bosch quickly realizes what this archive is for and begins to think about a plan of how to disrupt the archive. He and his fellow Spaniards, some of which are communist survivors fellow communist survivors of the Spanish Civil War, uh, begin to hatch up a plan to <clears throat> collect the negatives and to, uh, to take them from the concentration camp and use them to prosecute the Nazis. So what was once an archival collection of propaganda, Bosch and his associates turn into an archive of accusation an archive of prosecution. And herein lies, I think, one of the most interesting aspects of the film. Bosch is playing a very difficult game here. In fact, 
it's not completely sort of assured that his fellow Spaniards are on board with his plan. One thing that his communist colleagues are concerned with is saving fellow communist lives. Bosch, in his sort of obsession with this Nazi archival collection, uh, in fact, uh, he became more concerned with saving the film and the negatives than, than perhaps saving human lives. And herein creates a very fascinating debate within the movie. What should these Spanish uh, colleagues or associates do uh, in terms of surviving the Holocaust? To actually have humans survive? to create eyewitnesses and testimony after the war is over that will prosecute uh, the Nazis? Or should they spend a lot of their energy figuring out how to, to collect, to preserve, and keep alive film negatives? And in essence, Bosch's argument in the middle of the film is that although humans are important, no one will believe what they say when the war is over. They have to have documentary evidence to support their claim. In more recent Holocaust filmography, uh, directors and producers oftentimes concentrate on the horror of the concentration camp, the absolute misery and hopelessness that m many people must have had in these uh, places. But this film oftentimes is very optimistic and you can see this in the way that certain scenes are sort of projected. There is one scene, for example, when they are collecting the film and hiding the film, where the music in the background and the action of the actors is very nationalistic, almost, very optimistic. And it reminded me, actually, of a, scene, of a film like The Great Escape, where today it would seem a slightly out of place to put a scene of such sort of exuberance uh, in a Holocaust film. But just as this sort of unsettling montage begins, it quickly ends. And Targarana then grabs the viewer and brings them back to this sort of reality of the pain and misery of the concentration camp. Nevertheless, there are some incredibly intense scenes of wanton violence in this film that always reminds the viewer of just how horrific the Mauthausen camp must have been. On the other hand, there are also incredible scenes of comradeship, of survival, of, of doing what is possible to make it through the circumstances of and of course, the ultimate agency that is used in this film is that Bosch is successful in preserving at least 2,000 negatives uh, of, of, of this concentration camp. And when the war is over, uh, he actually uses these and he actually testifies against the Nazis. The photographer of Mauthausen does a lot of things that are important to our understanding of the Holocaust, or at least the way that we should remember the in no way, shape, or form does this film diminish the other kinds of victims that the Nazis attacked. But what it does is help us remind ourselves that there were a multiple of victims that Nazis sort of targeted. And it's helpful for us as historians to keep this sort of argument in the public realm as well. Not only that, but this film also allows for us as historians to think about documents and primary sources. Are photographs simply doctored? Or, as Francisco Bosch argues, do they depict a reality, a moment that actually happened? Thinking about how we can sort of corroborate these photographs, how we can particularly corroborate them with eyewitness accounts or other kinds of documents, it allows us to bring out the reality of the photographs. Indeed, this film reminds us that there is a certain humanity and a reality that we can know, that we can understand. If you're looking for something to watch on Netflix tonight, then photo the photographer of Mauthausen will be two hours invested well. I'm Shannon Bonchaya. I hope that you enjoyed this review, and if you did, please feel free to click the like button or the subscribe button. Thank you.
and I hope you enjoy the film.